Hello and welcome back to the free online woodworking school. In this video, all we've got to do is flush down the sides of this drawer and get it fitted within the shaker table. So if you're joining this series now, just be aware that the drawer is already constructed. We've been focusing on that in the past couple of episodes. The first one being sizing the components. The second one being cutting the joints and getting it assembled so it's nice and square. And so in this one, we've just got to finish off what we started and get it fitted in there. So when laying these out, we set the tails out so they're actually sticking slightly proud of the front of the drawer. And the reason for that was that we can make the drawer nice and snug when we're sizing it initially. And when we're flushing down these joints, we're not actually gonna change the size of the front. All we're doing is we're bringing the sides down to match it. The inverse of this would be the end grain of the front sitting proud, which is sort of standard practice for a lot of dovetails. But in this case, if we were to flush off that end grain, we're gonna end up making the front of the drawer smaller. And by doing so, it wouldn't fit nicely in the drawer cavity. Now I'm working with curly maple on these drawer sides, which has a rippled grain and it looks stunning. The downside being, it can be a bit of a pain to work because in one moment you're planing with the grain, then you're playing against it, then you're planing with it and against it every single time you go over one of those ripples or curls. And so to combat this, what I've done is I've sharpened one of my planes to 50 degrees. This is a bevel up plane or a low angle plane, which is kind of counterintuitive because the low angle allows you to increase the pitch of the blade. And in doing so, what you're able to do is turn this into more of a scraper plane than a sort of cutting plane. I guess. It's still cutting, but it's more of a scraping action rather than a low angle shearing. I won't get too hung up on it in this video because it's just focused on fitting the drawers. However, there's a ton of supporting resources in the description below. If you find yourself in this situation and you want to know how to sharpen a plane to these steeper angles and when to actually do it. So I'm actually gonna start on the back of the drawer because that's the bit that's gonna go in first. We might as well work our way sort of towards the front of the drawer. Again, these tails are sitting ever so slightly proud of the end grain. So we're just gonna set this plane for a really light cut and just get this so it's all sitting flush. The only downside of having a steeper angle like this is it doesn't shear through end grain as easily. So I'm just gonna reclamp this because it is wobbling a little bit there, as you can see. That's better. Still a tiny bit to do there, but we'll call that flush for the time being. This side. And already look, we are just about going in. It's still sort of sticky in there, even at the back, but that is like, that's a really nice start that we've got there. So we've got to start working on these middles now. And for that, I'm gonna begin going from the front. I try and get this as low as I can in the vise just to give it the most amount of support because this drawer is pretty thin and we're getting a fair amount of racking on it at the moment. In fact, what I'm gonna do is just slot a bit of wood in from above there because I think the plane might be slightly bending this middle and it's not actually gonna allow me to hit it as easily as I should be. Just making sure to sort of lift it off at the back to make sure I don't hit that end grain. Now the other side. Still pretty sticky. So now you can kind of assess where you're at just by looking at the front. I can see that it's sort of pinching in this top corner and there's a bit of a gap there. So I'm gonna take a little bit off there, but not too much. That's mostly to address that shadow gap. Cause what I'm more interested in is if we're rubbing on the tops, which it certainly looks like we are on this side. There's no movement there. And I think we've got a bit there, but that's wedging it in place. So we should probably take a bit off the top of this. So again, in that vise, I'm just gonna start halfway along the front and just work my way around that corner. So yeah, we've definitely got a step here that needs to come down. Good towards the start. We're just getting a little bit more binding there. It's like right in the middle and the rest of it's pretty good. And I can just about see, I think, that on the back top corner here, it's rubbing. Yeah, we're getting no movement up and down on the drawer there. Whereas on this side, we've got a tiny bit. So I think it's this back right corner. So there is a tiny, tiny grab there. But I think by the time we sand down these sides, that should be fine. Because it goes in just fine 
without me holding the table, but as soon as it gets there, that's when it's gonna start dragging the table with it. We get past it and then we can push it again. So at this point we can just assess how the draw front is sitting and figure out if we need to take a bit more off this side or this side in order to get it flush. At the moment, mine's looking quite good, but if it were sticking out sort of more on this side, you could always get a knife and score a line along the top of the drawer and along the bottom, and that will give you something to plane back to. It will look nice when it's closed. The only thing you'll notice is that you'll end up with a smaller lap on one side compared to the other. But fortunately with drawers, um, you can't look at both laps at the same time, and so it won't be too noticeable. Now, when it comes to fitting a drawer, what we're looking for is kind of minimal side to side movement. There's actually a bit more than I would want in this case, but we can live with it. What we're sort of looking for is a little bit of up and down movement, because when this drawer expands and contracts, it's going to do so from top to bottom. It's not going to expand this way or front to back, because that would be along the grain and wood doesn't really expand in that direction. But what it does do is across the width. And so if we've got it really snug top to bottom, then although it'll fit really nicely now, Later on in the year, it probably won't and it'll bind itself in there and get all sticky. So you can see on this side here, I've got a little bit of movement up and down. That's about right. This side there is, but it's not quite as much. So I'm going to take a tiny bit more off this top surface and also on the front. Because as I close it, I can sort of feel it catching on the bottom. And so I know we're sticking proud somewhere under there. And I think we'll need to take a bit off the top as well. Right, so now we've got a little bit of up and down movement at the back, a little bit at the front on both sides, and that should be enough to account for any expansion and contraction. This is going to leave you with a bit of a shadow gap at the top, but we can make that look even all the way around when it comes to the sanding stage by putting a small chamfer on all three of these edges, or all four of these edges, and that will kind of blend it all in and make it look consistent and intentional. So with the drawer fitting relatively nicely, Probably a seven out of 10, it's a bit of an off day today. Next, we need to devise a way of getting the drawer to stop in the correct location, because at the moment, it goes all the way to the back of the table and fills up that kind of gap that we left at the back. And so the method generally used to get a drawer to stop in the correct location is to attach a really small piece of wood on the back of this kind of front rail. By placing it there, we can use this small step that we've got on the back side of the front of the drawer to hit against it, and that's going to stop the drawer, hopefully flush with the front. In the case of this table, you could also put a stop behind the drawer by filling this cavity. Because of the way this table is constructed, it's not going to change in dimension front to back. Whereas some cabinets where the grain is going up vertically, the cabinet itself will change in depth over time. And so if you have a stop at the back and the sides shrink, effectively the front of the cabinet will start moving back, but the drawer will stay stopped at the back. And so it will begin sitting proud at the front. That's why generally it's good practice to leave a gap at the back and have the stop at the front because if this were a cabinet that was expanding and contracting firstly we've got a bit of space there that we can fill up and use as a bit of a buffer zone and secondly the drawer is always stopped by referencing from the front and so when you look at it it's always going to be sitting flush and once again the cabinet series that i filmed a couple of projects ago is a great example of where you need to account for this movement because that had a drawer constructed and fitted in exactly the same manner as this but the carcass of the furniture surrounding it was completely different. And so we had to allow for that expansion. So I'm just gonna use an off cut from one of the front rails to create this stop. Should be a relatively simple installation. So when sizing the shim, we need to make sure that it is no thicker than this step created here, which is probably about four millimeters. And so all we're gonna do is cut a four millimeter slice off the side of this in order to fit under there. But the easiest way to confirm this is by simply getting a marking gauge drop it down, lock it off, and then whatever you're left with there is going to be the maximum thickness of the shim. I'm actually going to bring the stock up slightly so we end up with a slightly thinner shim than we need, and that way we can account for any undulations that might happen on the bottom of this drawer. We can then get that setting and scratch it up this off cut. We'll go over the end grain, and then we might as well do it on the back as well. And so now with a saw, I'm just going to use a dovetail saw for this, we can cut that shim off. I'm going to cut about a millimetre away from the line because that way we can plane back to it and get a really precise fit and also have a finished face on the top of that stop. And now we're left with a really thin stop with a very faint line that we can sort of plane back to. A bit of double-sided tape should do the trick for this. Let's get that stuck to the bench. Shim of wood goes on top. 
and there's our high-tech clamp. Now there was a pretty pronounced grain direction on this, so I think I'll need to go from this direction. Normally I do this with a block plane, but I can't be asked to sharpen it. And what I like to do on these stops is just put a very small angle on either side. So I use a um, dovetail guide for that. There really is no function to this whatsoever. It just makes this look a little bit less like a scrap of wood glued to the inside and helps it just look a little bit more um, intentional, I guess. And just a bit of clean up on the shooting board. Watch your fingers. So that's the front and the sides cleaned up and we can start thinking about where it needs to be placed on this front rail. And the easiest way to do that is to simply set a gauge to the thickness of the front of the drawer and then use that setting and just do a mark in from the front like that. And at this point, we can see how much we need to remove off the back in order to make sure it sits nice and flush. So we'll just get that in position and then the pencil from underneath can mark where we need to cut back to. So then we can just give ourselves a midpoint and then we have got a bit of finish on this bottom rail, so I'll just sort of scratch that away to give us some bare wood and then it's up to you how you want to attach it for me just going to do a little bit of super glue just make sure it's sitting nice and flush with that front line and then we've still got a little bit of excess on the back but i'll just sort of sand back with a bit of sandpaper so now in theory this should go in clear over the runner and then stop it looks pretty good i would say we're sitting just a hair proud on the front, but it's better to be there than sitting too deep because all we need to do is just take a few shavings and also sand down the front of the drawer and we should be able to get that nice and flush on the front there. So let's do that now. So I've gone ahead and got it. So the drawer is now sitting flush with the front, giving it a few more sort of test fits. And I've actually ended up dropping the runner on the top here ever so slightly, because I noticed there was a tiny bit of twist happening either in the drawer or the cavity or something. I'm not too sure, but just by dropping that slightly, by loosening these bolts and retightening them, I've now got a really nice sort of smooth fit front to back. So with that all fitted, the only thing we need to do now is just get a little handle on the front. For this, I'm gonna slice a tiny bit off the end of this Macassar ebony and probably go for a dovetail shaped handle using a very similar method to what I used for the draw stop. So let's do that now and get it glued in position. I then went through all the usual processes you'd expect from this stage, such as cutting it down to size, shooting the end grain to refine the angle, and then sanding and gluing it in position with a little bit of tight bond before then forgetting to film an outro for this video. So consider this the outro. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed it, please don't forget to press the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next one.